So when you shoot in log, your image appears to be very flat, like not enough colors, like the way you saw it the day you were shooting. So that's because the camera is giving you enough dynamic range, in other words, enough details for you to use or for you to play with when you're doing your color grading. Most times people who don't know how to really convert or transform these uh, log footages and make it ready for color grading, they go ahead and they just start color grading the image without doing the proper transformation. And when you don't do the proper transformation, you're not using the details that was kept for you. But when you do the proper transformation, you are making good use of all the details and you're using the right space. So eventually your colors will behave differently and you get the best out of your camera. So I'll just go ahead and show you how this is done. But before I do that, I will show you how most people do it. So for example, this is a video I shot and this is lock. And some people will say, hey, okay, this is my image. Let me just go ahead and start doing color grading because you, you know it's exciting to do color grading. And then you say, hey, contrast. And then, uh, you know, you, you say, hey, this contrast is good. And let me try to add some saturation. You start adding saturations and you say hey okay i'm seeing the colors and you start grading you create another node to start grading and all this you can actually get something good but you're not using the details that was kept for you by the manufacturers of the camera because you are not transforming your log footages correctly to the right color space where it's supposed to be. Another person will say, hey, I know how to transform my image. He's going to say, color space transform. I know how to use it. He's going to put the color profiles of the camera, obviously. Uh, this, this video was shot on red, so he's going to say red, white, gamma, red, log, 3G, 10 for the input gamma and it's going to say output will be rec 709 and then 2.4 so he's going to be like yes i saw this on a tutorial online and this is good i mean this is great you have done it well but he's going to spoil everything by grading after this he's going to say okay let me start doing my grades he will start doing grade in the end of a year he will start say okay i think i need to add some contrast and then i think i need to play with the u when you start doing anything after the cst transformation it's like you're not using the space or the details it's like you're doing the same thing we did before you're not using the details that these guys kept for you because after the cst it's like you're working from rec 709 image so now you're not using all the red dynamic range given to you by the camera you know you're not using all that so the best way to do this is not to work after the CST is to work before the CST. So I'll keep the CST at the end and then I come and start working here. This is the best way, this is the right way you do it. So that anything that happens in this space happens before it gets to the REC 709 conversion. Another way to attack this or another way to transform your images is by coming first to uh, color management and then you change your timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and then you click save. Now, what you're telling DaVinci Resolve is that, hey, give me this your big color space, the huge color space, the DaVinci White Gamut, so I can work with, I can be able to be flexible with my image, with my colors, you see. So how do you transform your image when you're using that DaVinci White Gamut color management? You're going to put two color space transform effects. One is going to be at the end and then one is going to be in the beginning. So this one in the beginning is the in and then this one at the end is the out. Now you're going to say, hey, this was shot on red. So red, white, gamma. Input gamma is red, log, TGG, then. And the output is DaVinci, white, gamma. And 
The output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. In the out node, you come to the input color space. The input color space of this image right now is no longer red, but it's DaVinci White Gamma. I hope you understand. And input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Now, the output color space, what do I want? I want Rec 709 because that's what everybody's going to watch your video on. So, Gamma 2.4. So, you see this? We're getting the same transformation like the previous transformation we did, but the difference here is we are using the DaVinci White Gamut space. So whatever tools you use in DaVinci Resolve inside this space is very, very color space aware. If you want to be more advanced with it, you can come here and say uh, tone mapping. You can click here. And if you see tone mapping is going to help more in in the in the white you know maybe bringing more details in the highlights bring this down to the end you can see what's happening you see how the highlight is being you know compressed you know sometimes some people like this kind of looks or you can go high you know it all depends on you but most times i don't use the tone mapping unless uh, the images really really demands it and sometimes you can come over to the gamut mapping method and say hey saturation compression you can reduce the saturation if the entire saturation after converting the image was too much for you you can say hey just take it down a little you know but still most times i leave it like that unless the image really demands it. So basically that's how you do transformation of your image from log to rec 719.